Utah's most accurate forecast with Cesar Carnejo, weather rate certified 10 years in a row. 644, welcome back, Utah. Caesar, we're talking drought and extreme flooding this morning. Talk about the whirlwind in the weather department. Well, Sarah, you know, they actually go hand in hand. When we are so dry, our soils really cannot absorb all of that water at once. It can only absorb so much, so the rest just becomes runoff. And what we can expect with that actually is still a storm activity possible for parts of the northern half of the state now, too. We continue to see that there is still the possibility of some flash flooding, so that does bring up a concern for us. We have clearing air given that we have a different change in our wind direction, and we expect to see storm chances increasing as we go throughout the rest of the week. So far, right now, here in Deer Valley, take a look at that. A little bit of some cloud cover still hanging around, some orange hues as we have. That smoke still lingering, but not as terrible as yesterday. Here so far right now, also in St. George, lingering smoke, but the storms really helped keep us on the clear side for us, helping wash out some of that pollutants over in the atmosphere. And right now we're seeing that it is light for a lot of central and southern Utah. It gets a little bit thicker as we go up north, but that's going to change as we have more southerly flow making its way in. And we can actually tell that in our storm directions. Look at that. They're moving from south to north, meaning that a lot of our winds are coming in from the south where we have less wildfire smoke, so that should help clear out our air. One thing it also does is brings in moisture. Take a look at southern Utah. We expect to see dew points well into the 70s, 60s, and even upper 50s. We're not missing out any of the love here in parts of northern Utah and the Wasatch Front with dew points also in the 50s and 50s really for us. And what does that mean? Well, we're going to see plenty of atmospheric moisture. So basically we have the juice that we need to get these storms going and as soon as we get some of that heating from the sun it just pops up and will continue to have some storm activity. And as we see that most of it will happen around the spine of the central and Wasatch Mountains and parts of eastern Utah. That's where we see most of this moisture content really hanging around and that's why we have this excessive rainfall forecast for where we can expect to see some of that potential heavy rain. And the flash flood potential still stays elevated in southern Utah, where we expect to see some shower activity still hanging around as we look at future casts. Take a look at that. It really starts to spark up for us towards the evening and afternoon hours. And once we get into Wednesday, that's where we start to see a little bit more widespread storm activity for parts of northern Utah. And that's where we'll see the possibility for some localized flooding ourselves. So as we look at the regional forecast for today, temperatures luckily for us will be on the milder side around the mid 90s throughout the entire state. Maybe a few 80s sprinkled in also. But Looking at St. George's seven day forecast, isolated storm chances and temperatures near average for the rest of the week as we go into the weekend a little bit more widespread. Wasatch Front will see our storm chances increase as we go throughout the rest of the work week and into the weekend, but even lower temperatures as we continue finishing out the work week. And looking at the Wasatch Front track.